Today we're in Trumpelo, which there are plenty of fish out there in Trumpelo, but that's not what I'm here for. I'm here for trains because there's a really good viewing area to watch the trains go by, and I know you can already see it because as soon as I pulled up, there were trains going by. Hey all you colorful sprinkles, it's a beautiful Mother's Day. I'm filming this on Sunday and, and I'm in Trempolo checking out some of the sites. So as I went into the city, the first place I parked was this place. And of course I'm looking for trains and I look over and I see a train car just sitting in the middle of a lot. This says Erie Mining Co. It's very interesting. You can kind of walk up to it. I didn't want to trespass so I didn't know if you had to pay to get on there or what the deal was but they do have a door and there was a sign so maybe I'll have to come back and see what that's all about. I also love the beautiful architecture in this town. All the buildings are gorgeous. This one had some interesting window displays of old pulleys and levers and things. This is interesting. I don't know if it's a historic building and the grass was looking beautiful today. Everything was in bloom. It was just a beautiful sunny day. And this is a statue of James Allen Reed, one of the first non-indigenous persons to show up here at Trempolo. So uh, I guess he was a fur trader and known for throwing tomahawks, according to the sign out front. And I guess he lived from 1795 to 1873. And that's his dogs up there, too. I wonder what their names were. That's more important. And right behind the statue are these train tracks. There wasn't a train going by right at the moment, but I wanted you to be able to see this is a great viewing site for trains going by. Also, take a look at this view. It's beautiful. There's people out on boats in the lake. It's a sunny 70 degree day here in Wisconsin. It's absolutely lovely out. And look at that view of the river. We even have a boat going by. I went to head back to my car and actually I had to run back to the lake area because I saw another train coming. So I stopped and ran up there and got the middle of the train. I got a, I got a good amount and you can see the beautiful graffiti on it. I love train graffiti. It's kind of hard to make out when it's going so fast. Maybe if we slowed it down. I don't know about you, but I absolutely love train graffiti. In fact, I sometimes just stop and look at parked trains to see if there's any graffiti on them. I always think the art is beautiful. The lettering's really cool. And I've always had a thing for typography. I love typography, but look at this talent. These beautiful artists have made such beautiful art on these trains. And um, I honestly love train graffiti. How many of you love train graffiti? Let me know in the comments if you love train graffiti because I feel like it's so stigmatized, but I think it's wonderful. There's the caboose, everybody wave bye. Let's head on over to another part. But first, as I'm walking away, I did notice there are some train spikes just sitting on the ground. Hopefully uh, they don't need that, but they're just laying there. Also, have a look at the top of this building. It says 1871 and it's in stained glass, which is absolutely beautiful. And if you look down past these old signs on the side, it says hotel, tourist info. So maybe you can actually stay there. Maybe it's a real functioning hotel. And across the street from the hotel was this old sign and all I can make out from it is goods and bread. Let me know if you know what it said or if you can make it out. Let's head out of Trempolo and head towards La Crosse because I have a few more stops to stop at. All right, first I stopped in Onalaska at the Great River Landing, and this is a great place to stop because there's also an information center. But if you step down the hill here a little bit, you'll see not only do you get a beautiful view of the lake, but trains like to dock here and stop and do whatever it is trains do. And also I'm noticing that there are two trains here. One's parked on one track and the other is parked on the other. Let's head down the hill and see if we can get a closer look at them. And it looks like one of the trains is going to start moving in just a second. It's slowly inching towards the train gates. So let's just stop and enjoy this train for a minute. And let's watch it pass by.
Ooh, here's more of that beautiful graffiti. Look at the colors on that one. It also appears the train behind it is starting to move. Interesting, the train in the front seems to be slowing down a little bit. The other train's still going, but it appears this one up front is stopping. Maybe they left something, forgot something. I see a guy in a orange vest up here and he looks like he's getting ready to hop up onto the train. That train in the back is still moving though, heading in the same direction as this train, for now, at least until the track switches, but uh, it appears this train is halting and I've got the sound cut out but you could actually hear the brakes really loudly. Here comes some more intricate graffiti. I can't quite make out what the one on the right says, but the first one looks like it says aberb or aberrate. I don't know, but it seems that it is still going very slowly. It hasn't stopped yet, so that's good news. Maybe it'll get out of our way before the other train goes. Oh, nope, it halted. Okay. That's weird. Why has it stopped? Oh, let's check on our guy over here. He's looking at it. Oh, he appears to be climbing up onto the train here. And is he getting on board? No, he's twisting this crank thing. Does anyone in my comment section know what he's doing here? What those little cranks are? Maybe we'll find out. Let's watch and see what he does. He seems to be cranking that for a bit. All right. And also, if we head further up here, you can see a little more of the lake, although there is some shrubbery. And then there's a beautiful bike trail or walking trail. Oh, here, the trains leave. Oh. Okay, the train is coming apart right there where he was screwing. Maybe he was unscrewing the trains from each other. Interesting. So I guess those trains are just going to sit there on the track. Let's head a little further down the road to see what we can see. So I pulled off to the side here because there was a nice little viewing area. This is called Eagle Landing. And this little spot over here, it's a great place to sit and watch the eagles on the lake. Pardon my uh, finger in the camera here. Um, but if you look around, I didn't see any eagles today, but this is a great spot for viewing them when they are active and flying around. But the sky was pretty clear today. I didn't really see any birds. 
If you end up here on a day like today where there's no birds, you'll still get to see an eagle, but um, it's not as exciting. But if you look over to the right here, you'll see this little eagle on this sculpture here. All right, I know this video is not about eagles, so let's head further down the road because there's another train I want to show you right here in the park. There's a train station as well. Uh, both are inactive, but this is the old train station here in La Crosse, and you can get a pretty close look at it. It is gated around, but you can see the Burlington route train. It's a pretty big train too. Let's see if we can go on the other side and get a look at that. I mean, this thing is massive. I wouldn't want to be a cow on the train tracks. Now this is only a few cars long. So it's not a full train, but you do get to see the caboose at the end and everything. So it is a good little example of a train, but across the street from the train, I love this building here. It's kind of being blocked by trees. Let's see if we can get a closer look by going over here. I'm gonna walk over here and you can kind of see the remnants of an old Coca-Cola sign on the side of there. I love old brick wall paintings. All right, if we head back to my car, it's parked down here, but you can see the beautiful riverfront. It's Mother's Day. Everyone's out here barbecuing, listening to music, going on boat rides, having a lovely day in this beautiful weather. Just look at that. It's gorgeous out. All right, so now I'm at the Amtrak station, but unfortunately, I don't see any trains. And I sat and waited for quite a little bit of time and just did not see any trains pull up. So I decided to go somewhere else check out this little uh, pathway here. It's a little bit past the Amtrak station and you'll see there is a train parked on the tracks over here. It's kind of hidden by the community garden over here. Next stop has nothing to do with trains, but I wanted to show it off. I've been in this building once before. This is an old building. Uh, it's actually an old rubber factory for shoes, I believe, and it was built in 1916. At least that's the number on the building. That could be the address, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure that's the year it's built, but check out the old mailbox as well. All right, let's head on in and see, this is kind of open to the public, but it is a business area and a apartment complex and they've moved a few businesses in here. Look at that beautiful central area here, this little just chill out spot where you can sit by the water fountain. And then we head up the stairs and one of the things I noticed first are these pictures. I believe, I, I don't know for sure because it just had their names, but I believe these were the operators of the factory or the directors. And also behind me, I noticed this giant old fire extinguisher. Imagine lugging that upstairs to fight fires. And this looks like a picture of the old rubber mills from 1897. It's a, a painting, of course but it gives us a look back. And they also have these beautiful murals all down the hallways. But there's one particular hallway where they have some remnants left over from the rubber factory. You can see them hanging on the wall. It kept really true to its original purpose, except for, you know, now it's got businesses and it's not an operational factory. But there's this little section. It almost looks like they're building a little museum over here but you can still step down and take a look at, they have rubber shoes. I see a Buffalo Bill poster sitting on this table, which is kind of neat. They're getting ready to hang these things up, I think, or, or take them down, I'm not sure. They got the old cash register and some booklets from the rubber mill company. And I think these are shoe molds for shaping shoes. Maybe they dip them in rubber and then peel the shoe off. That's at least what I think. And does anyone know what this is? I looked up into it. I don't quite understand. It looks like some sort of air conditioning unit, maybe? I'm not sure, or like a fume dispenser. Some nuts and bolts and machine pieces. And then here you can see half of what the boot looks like. That's pretty neat. and some more pictures of what the factory used to look like when it was operational. 
I wonder what year this is. It does look kind of old. Everything looks kind of flat around it too. I mean, look, you can see the whole city area. I noticed another staircase that led upstairs. I wanted to see what that was about, so I went up it. It was kind of an empty floor. You could look out the window and see some of the factory behind it, but there wasn't much to these floors. I think this is the residential section, or at least half of it is, because the other half had an open door and it looked like it was very under construction, kind of left the way that they found it. Maybe it's still being worked on for office spaces. I know they have some buildings in there. And then I wanted to drive around to the side so you could see just how big this factory is. It covers this whole area. I know there's trees in the way, but all these buildings you are seeing here are part of this factory. And you can even see the old factory windows. Boots over shoes, lacrosse. Well, that about does it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next week with another one.